This is Katie Compton's Trek Boon, and you might not know it yet, but this is definitely one of the most interesting professional cyclocross bikes in the professional cyclocross peloton, if not the most interesting. Let's take a look. Starting with the colour of the frame, that is Miami Porsche blue. How cool is that? If we go to the build, Compton rides on a Bontrager Montrose saddle. She has Bontrager bars and a Bontrager stem. And I think from those parts, let's look at the drivetrain because the drivetrain is actually seriously very interesting. Compton is riding Jura Ace Di2, but with mechanical disc brakes, which I think she may well be the only rider at pro level in cyclocross doing that. So she's got Jura Ace Di2 brake and shift levers. She's got the sprint shifters and the drops, which is very useful for cyclocross because the drops are really a very safe place to be when you're riding down technical descents. She's got a Jura Ace Di2 front mech, a Jura Ace Di2 rear mech, Jura Ace cranks with Wickworks chain rings. So they are 34-44, which they feel is a better gear ratio for KT rather than the standard that we see cross riders on, which is 39-46. Got an 11 through to 28 Jura Ace cassette and we've got Shimano's Ice Tech disc brake rotors, so they are 140 front and rear. Pedals are also Shimano, and they are XT, so we don't see many cross riders riding straight Shimano XTR pedals, because often the clearances are a little tighter on them, and with cyclocross pedals, you want the clearances to be as good as possible, so Compton has gone for second in range XT. Wheels are supplied by a new brand, so they're a new company founded by people from Reynolds, Lou Wheels, and these are called night wheels and they found actually in early season testing these perform really well absorbed a lot of bumps very very good for cyclocross tires again is a change for the 2016 through to 17 season for Compton these are the Clement MXPs so most professional cyclocross riders stick to brands like Dugast FMB or Challenge Clement are a relatively new brand on the scene their tubulars are tubeless rather than tubed which means you can run sealant in and they're perhaps a little less susceptible to puncturing although tubulars are not all that susceptible in the first place and the MXPs are a Griffo style tread so the Griffo tread is really the intermediate tread that riders will use in kind of dry to relatively sticky mud conditions but these are slightly different because they have a lot more grip in on the side of the tyre which means that you can probably use them in even the muddiest of conditions because you're not going to slide out on off cambers or slippy corners. The tyres are 33mm wide, which is of course bang on the UCI's upper tyre width limit of 33mm. And if you're only going to have one set of a tread of tyres, having the widest that you can have makes sense because wider tyres are slightly grippier, they absorb bumps better, and they actually counterintuitively roll faster. Now I've really covered the basics of Compton's bike right now, but speaking to her mechanics, there's almost a whole nother pro bike to do in finishing touches here. It is absolutely a bike nerd's dream, this bike. They kept using the phrase, the art of the bike, and I think this bike definitely reflects this. One of the rules on Compton's bike is no zip ties allowed. So the disc brake hoses are attached with fishing wire that is then tied. How cool is that? That is just looks, looks very subtle, almost transparent. And yeah, no zip ties allowed anywhere on the bike. And yeah, a quick check, there are no zip ties allowed. Nearly any part of the frame or bike where water could possibly get in, which is quite likely given the conditions of most cyclocross races, has been sealed up. Again, it's probably something worth thinking about if you're building up your cross bike at home. As long as you don't get, the get it on the cables or anything like that, that will help you out. The handlebar tape is wrapped right to the middle of the bars meaning that Compton can ride anywhere on the tops quite comfortably. And I've actually only ever seen that before on track bikes for guys like Bradley Wiggins when they're riding the Madison. All of the bearings on the bike have been replaced with ceramic bearings, but they were saying that when they previously tried full ceramic bearings, so ceramic bearings and ceramic bearing races, once they get wet, the bearings tend to oxidize and freeze up. So these bearings are ceramic bearings in stainless steel races, which they mean and they feel are actually less susceptible to oxidizing and locking up should they get wet. So apparently this spins very easily, which it does. Up at the front on the shifters, you might notice something a bit different about the appearance of the shift paddles. And that's because they have got something called Bondex, which is a UV reactive plastic. So you put it on, hold a UV light over it for four seconds and it sets. And they've added a few edges just to the edges of the shift levers, which gives it 
more grip. So if you have really thick gloves, very cold hands, you can shift no matter the conditions. Something that we're very used to seeing on many pro bikes with DI2 is heat shrink wrap around the brake cable and the DI2 wire. And Compton's bike is no different, but Compton was also one of the very first people to have this on her bike. Finally, almost my absolute favorite detail on this bike, and it's a very, very bike nerdy thing, are the drilled titanium bolts that the brakes are attached with. So you're already saving weight because they're titanium bolts, and then you save a little bit more because they're drilled. How cool is that? Anyway, if, like me, you've really enjoyed looking at this bike, please do give this video a thumbs up and hit share too. To see some cyclocross advice from one of Trek's other riders, Sven Nace, click there to look at his ultimate guide to cyclocross. And a really basic skill for cyclocross is getting off and back on your bike. We've got a video with Sven again, that one's right there. To subscribe to GCN, click on the logo on screen, and there's also a link up to our shop on screen too, so click on that.